So there are three major stimuli for changing the way that muscle works and making muscles stronger, larger, or better in some way. So you can nest this as a principle for yourself, which is if you want to get stronger, it's a couple of key variables that I'll spell out for you. And if you do that, so when you hear the science of muscle and muscle hypertrophy, you might think, oh, well, I'm not interested in building muscle, but muscle does many critical things. It's important for movement. It's important for metabolism. The more muscle you have, and not just muscle size, but the quality of muscle, that's a real thing, the higher your metabolism is, and indeed the healthier you are. It turns out that jumping ability and ability to stand up quickly and to get up off the floor quickly is one of the most predictive markers of aging and biological aging. And no surprise, that is governed by the brain to muscle connection. The whole reason for having a nervous system The whole reason for having a brain is so that we can control our movements in very dedicated ways. That is one of the reasons, perhaps the predominant reason, why the human brain is so large. You might think, oh, it's so large for thinking and for creativity. Ah, no. When you look at the amount of real estate in the brain that's devoted to different aspects of life, it's mainly vision, our ability to see, and movement our ability to engage in lots of different kinds of movements, slow movements, fast movements, explosive, etc. Heavy weights can help build muscle and strength, but they are not required. What one has to do is adhere to a certain number of parameters, just a couple of key variables that I'll spell out for you. And if you do that, you can greatly increase muscle hypertrophy, muscle size, and or muscle strength if that's what you want to do. And you don't necessarily have to use heavy weights in order to do that. Now, I'm sure the power lifters and the the people that like to move heavy weights around will say, no, if you want to get strong, you absolutely have to lift heavy weights. And that might be true if you want to get very strong. But for most people who are interested in supporting their muscular such that they offset any age-related decline in strength or in increasing hypertrophy and strength to some degree, there really isn't a need to lie about the Henneman size principle, which many people out there are doing, and claiming that you absolutely need to use the heaviest weights possible in order to build strength and muscle. So there are three major stimuli for changing the way that muscle works and making muscles stronger, larger, or better in some way. And those are stress, tension, and damage. Those three things don't necessarily all have to be present, but stress of some kind has to exist. Something has to be different in the way that the nerve communicates with the muscle and the way that the muscle contracts or performs that makes the muscle need to change. So this is very reminiscent of neuroplasticity in the brain. Something needs to happen. Certain chemicals need to be present. Certain processes need to happen or else a tissue simply won't change itself. But if those processes and events do happen, then the tissue has essentially no option except but to change. But basically, along the length of the muscle, you have what's called myosin. And just think of myosin as it's kind of like a wire. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a bunch of beads and wires that extend across the muscle. I think that's the simplest way to describe it. And the myosin is surrounded by these little beads called actin. The way muscles get bigger is that basically the myosin gets thicker. It's a protein, right? And it gets thicker. So put this in your mind. If you're listening to this, or even if you're watching it on YouTube, the way to think about this whole actin myosin thing and muscles getting bigger is imagine that you're holding a bouquet of balloons, a bunch of balloons by their strings, except you're not holding the strings all at their bottom. So the bouquet isn't nicely arranged. It's not like some balloons that are all up at the top and you're holding the strings down at the bottom. Imagine that one of the balloons that is very close to your hand, another one is a little bit higher up. And so this bouquet is very disorganized. In other words, the string extending out of your hand, the strings rather extending out of your hand are all different lengths. And so the balloons are all over the place. That's essentially what myosin looks like in the muscle. And those strings are what we call the filaments. And then the myosin head that is the balloon. When you stress a muscle properly, or you give it sufficient tension, or you damage the muscle just enough, there's an adaptive response that takes place where protein is synthesized, and it's a very specific protein. 
it's myosin. The myosin gets thicker. In other words, the balloons get bigger. So the way to think about muscle growth and the way to think about muscles getting stronger is that those balloons get bigger and the muscle gets thicker. Everybody has imbalances in how muscles can grow, how well muscles can grow or how poorly or how challenging it is for their muscles to grow. Now, many people who are afraid of like getting too bulky, for instance, are afraid of lifting weights. But I think the research shows now that everyone of pretty much every age should be doing some sort of resistance exercise, even if that's body weight exercises in order to offset this age-related decline in muscle contractile ability, muscle strength, etc., improve bone density. There's nothing good about getting frail and weak over time. And people who invest the effort into doing resistance exercise of, of some kind, whether or not it's with bands or with weights or with body weight, really benefit tremendously at a whole body level, at a systemic level, as well as in terms of muscle strength. So you can nest this as a principle for yourself, which is if you want to get stronger, it's really about moving progressively greater loads or increasing the amount of weight that you move. Whereas if you're specifically interested in generating hypertrophy, it's all about trying to generate those really hard, almost painful, localized contractions of muscle. Now, of course, how much weight you use in order to generate those contractions will also impact hypertrophy. But I think most people don't really understand the mind-muscle connection. It sounds like a great thing, but it's actually one of the things you want to avoid if your goal is simply to become more supple or to become stronger. You want to do the movements properly and safely, of course, but it's the opposite of hypertrophy, where with hypertrophy, you're really trying to make that particular muscle, sometimes two muscles, do the majority, if not all the work. Whereas in moving force loads, in trying to generate activity of any kind, like lifting a bar or doing a chin-up or something, those so-called compound movements that involve a lot of muscle groups, if, they're, if your goal is to be better at those, you want to avoid isolating in any one particular muscle. What's very clear now from all the literature that's transpired, and especially from the literature in this last three years, is that once you know roughly your one repetition maximum, the the maximum amount of weight that you can perform an exercise with for one repetition in good form, full, full range of motion, that it's very clear that moving weights or using bands or using body weight, for instance, in the 30 to 80% of one rep maximum, that is going to be the most beneficial range in terms of muscle hypertrophy and strength. So muscle growth and strength. And there will be a bias. If you're moving weights that are in the 75%, 80% range, or maybe even going above that, 85 and 90%, you're going to bias your improvements towards strength gains. This is true. And if you use weights that are in the 30% of your one repetition maximum or 40% or 50% and doing many more repetitions, of course, then you are biasing towards hypertrophy and what some people like to call muscle endurance. But that's a little bit of a complicated term because endurance we almost always think of as relating to running or swimming or some long bouts of activity. So 30 to 80% of one repetition maximums, it doesn't really seem to matter for sake of hypertrophy, except at the far ends when you're really trying to bias for strength. So we can make this simple. Perform anywhere from five to 15 sets of resistance exercise per week, and that's per muscle, and that's in this 30 to 80% of what your one repetition maximum. That seems to be the, the most scientifically supported way of offsetting any decline in muscle strength if you're working in the kind of five set range if you have muscles that are challenging to contract it's going to take more sets in order to stimulate the desired effect in those muscles not fewer okay if you have muscles that you are very good at generating force within it's going to take fewer sets now how many sets you are going to have to determine that it's going to depend for those of you that are using like 50 percent of your one repetition maximum because you're doing a lot of repetitions, you might find that three or four, five sets will maintain the muscle. You might decide to do that once at one point in the week and then do it again, right? So if you're going for 10 sets a week, you can divide that among two sessions. You could do that all in one session. The data really show it doesn't matter. 
There are some, you know, differences in terms of whether or not you're trying to generate maximum intensity within a workout or whether or not you want to spread that out. But in general, resistance workouts of any kind tend to be best favored by workouts that are somewhere between 45 minutes and 60 minutes and generally not longer than 60 minutes because that's when all the uh, things like cortisol and some of the inflammatory pathways really start to uh, create a situation in the muscle and in the body that's not so great for you. Remember, the better you are at contracting particular muscles and in isolating those muscles, the fewer sets likely you need to do in order to get the desired effect.